What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Now I wanted to make this real quick before I went and did other stuff IRL because 2023 is going to be the year. Hopefully it's a year that I could improve myself in so many ways and also a year that you can improve yourself in whatever way that you want to. Mine's gonna be mainly physical as I get back into better and better shape, which is what I'm about to go do, about to go work out. So hopefully we can have like an eight, nine minute discussion on Genshin though, because this is a big thing for me. Genshin, I didn't think I was gonna play this game when it first came out. I thought maybe I'd play it for a couple of days and it on its surface level seemed very uninteresting as far as mechanics went, as far as finding new things out. It seemed like a very shallow title, which is why so many characters at the start of the game kind of went under the radar of being good. Characters like Bennett, characters like Shing Cho, because I derive a ton of fun in gaming in general from figuring out mechanics in the game, whether it's character mechanics or weapon mechanics or just different things that work behind the scenes. And the big one for Genshin was elemental reactions. The whole elemental reaction system was something that the community itself had to come together and figure out. Drop rates was a big one as well. How did, how did AR levels affect you as you leveled up? Treasure chests, did they respawn or was it just new chests would come into the world as you achieved higher AR rankings? Figuring and discovering new things in the community discussing with the community, whether it's here on YouTube in the comment sections, in the Discord that's always linked down below, when we're streaming on Twitch, all of that stuff is what I get enjoyment from in a video game. More so, you could say that I enjoy that more than actually playing the game itself. But with Genshin being like a three-year-old game now, all a lot of those conversations are dried up. And since I missed the Dendro conversation, I feel like a lot of those conversations for the time being are kind of put on hold because Genshin's doing what Genshin usually does, where a new area comes out. And then at the end of that area, at the end of the life cycle around patch 3.5, 3.6, 3.7, a lot of players are waiting for the next area, right? At the end of Mondstadt, people were waiting for Inazuma and then everyone got super hyped when it came out. And at the end of Inazuma, people were waiting for Sumeru. And then people got hyped up again when Sumeru came out and Dendro came out, it's a big thing. And now that we're at the end of Sumeru, people are, you've seen it probably, whether it's my comment section or someone else's, or maybe you've even already commented it, I'm waiting for Fontaine. When's Fontaine? I'm waiting for Fontaine. And yeah, like I said, in a couple of weeks, Bias Who's gonna be coming out and Kave is gonna be coming out. And something I've noticed since I've come back to the YouTube era post 2022, now that I've been able to do more stuff again, is that it's a lot harder to produce good content, well edited content, the kind of stuff that I wanna make that's both informational, starts a discussion, and is fun and interesting to watch at the same time. Edited well, or at least edited better than zero effort, right? Unlike this video. That's the kind of content that I wanna produce still. But with the way that YouTube is going on right now, a lot of that feels like wasted time for me because it's nearly impossible. It might even just be impossible at this point to compete in the content creation YouTube space with anyone that might have access to a Hoyoverse media account. For instance, if I wanted to generate videos for Baizu when it came out, not even regarding how much Primo gems and fates and stuff we'd have to save up and pull just to make content for that character or maybe even spend money to make sure you get the character in the weapon in enough resin so you can level them up in a fashionable time as well as the amount of time spent gathering all that stuff, leveling everything up, getting everything ready to go, getting all of the footage after the character's released, testing it against everything, putting the math that we can do with the leaky leaks around the little squeaky pipes, testing that math in the game as well, putting all of that stuff together, that takes days, that takes a couple of days minimum, maybe even five days to do all of that stuff, plus however many hours it takes actually pulling and doing and leveling, all of that, you know what I'm saying, all of that stuff takes time. And it's almost impossible, if not actually impossible, to compete with anyone. And this isn't a slight on anyone who has access to a media account, it's just the objective truth on this platform to have high level editing with all of the characters with all of the different builds and all of the showcases if you don't have access 
to that sort of media account. It's just not a thing that we can do where I can put out the kind of content I want in a timely manner. And because I'm not able to do that, it takes a lot away of my enjoyment of the game because enjoying any game is tied hand in hand with me being able to showcase and have it get to you guys in the community, whether it's FFB or War of the Visions or Genshin Impact. So basically what I'm trying to say is that that has really disenfranchised my ability to enjoy this game as much as I should enjoy it. And to be totally honest with you, with all of these different characters I have access to, even new characters, just don't really get it going for me anymore. I just don't get hyped up because I have all these different characters that I can use. Some of them that I haven't even used at all, like this Dory that I should probably level up to get a free pull here. There's so much stuff that I could do that I don't really care for new content based around characters anymore. It's not that big of a deal. And all I see is a nightmare of trying to produce and edit content for a character on this platform and on this space. It's a little bit of a of a downer, if you want to say it, and maybe even takes away from my enjoyment of it even more because it cuts out all of the discussions. It cuts out the ability for us to showcase everything. And because this game's now moving on to almost three years old, the, a lot of the questions that need answered about how different things work, how Dendro works, is it good? All of these things have been answered already. And until we have more stuff like that, where we can really dig in and have those conversations again, I'm not sure if I am waiting for that or I'm not just lying to myself that I enjoy the game more than I probably do. But the good news is, is that there's a lot of stuff that has piqued my interest as well in 2023, which is another thing that probably is taken away from my enjoyment because new games coming out that I think I might actually enjoy and new games come with new systems, new conversations, more people coming into the community to have those conversations. And that is what's really hyping me up, the ability for us to have those conversations and discover things once again, test new characters, generate new tier lists. And what's gonna happen here is that 15 days from now, we're gonna have access to Baizu. But before this actually happens, something else very important is happening as well. The 26th of this month is April, and that's gonna bring a new title for us to potentially cover. Now that title is gonna be Honkai Star Rail, and there's gonna be a couple other games that I think I'd be generally interested in, but Star Rail might be the one that I am least interested in, but we'll have to find out. Now the closed beta's come and gone, and we're sort of waiting for the official release of the game. But this is going to be a game that we can once again have conversations about and we'll also be able to tie in a lot of our experiences with Genshin Impact as well as with Epic 7, which is a game that I've been playing a lot but have never actually put content on this channel for. Because this is unlike Genshin, it's not an action RPG as you can see. It's a turn-based sort of battle style game, more traditional in the sense. And from everything I've experienced and everything that I've looked into, it's basically Hoyo versus answer, if you will, to an Epic Seven style game. So this might not be interesting for you when we cover it. Don't feel forced to watch it if you're not. Don't feel forced to get in there and leave comments on something you're not interested on. But if you are, this is something that we'll probably check out on April 26, release some survival guides from Genshin Impact over to Honkai Star Rail, because yes, they're gonna have very similar sort of systems and mechanics in this game, elemental systems return, the different things like the Stardust, Star Glitter Shop seem to have a version of that in Honkai Star Rail, different kind of fates, things to do of that nature, how to identify different currencies, all of the traditional gacha game stuff is something that we can talk about once again and make content on. And so I'm looking forward to checking this out. However, it's not the game that I think I'm the most interested in coming out in this year. But I do think that it is time for me to try to spread my wings a little bit more, which is a big and very scary thing to do going from FFBE to War of the Visions to Genshin Impact was a huge thing. Now going from Genshin Impact to another thing is also very, very big considering that Genshin was the only game that was covered on this channel for about a year and a half until the end of 2021. And we did a lot of cool stuff and it was very well received up until 
2021 when I had to step away for a bit, but this is something else that I'm looking forward to. Now, another game that I'm looking forward to as well, and you guys have been leaving comments and DMs, is Wuthering Waves. Now, Wuthering Waves is a game that's gonna have a closed beta test, I believe, very soon. It's already ended. You can't sign up for it anymore. I wanna say it's the 28th of April, but that could be wrong as well. Werther, it's coming out, the, the closed beta anyway, is pretty soon. Now, if we don't get into it, we won't be able to play it and, and make conversations about how I felt about playing it. But if we don't get in, we're still gonna be watching it and maybe have a video or two about it. Just because the closed beta is coming out really soon does not mean that this game's gonna be released anytime soon. The closed beta could come and go and then this game comes out a week later. Could be a month later, two months later, four months later, a year later. No one knows, but if you're interested in Genshin Impact, Wuthering Waves seems to be almost, I don't wanna say identical, but it's got that action RPG aesthetic. It's got action combat, it's got world exploration. And while both Honkai Star Rail and Wuthering Waves have some world exploration bits, Wuthering Waves seems to be much more inclined for the average Genshin Impact enjoyer to sort of get in and think of it as a one-to-one, -one, but a new game as well. Figure out what characters are cool, you know, the combat system what we can do. A lot of conversations could be had on this one as well. And it's very intriguing to me. So this one is one I'm very, very uh, looking forward to. Very, very, very looking forward to. I don't know what to say, but I'm looking forward to this game quite a bit, even though it's the game that we have the least amount of information on right now. Now, this one here is probably a game that I don't know if I'd make on this channel because so far this channel has been an anime JRPG game, but Diablo 4 is a game that I hope is good. We'll say that, I'll hope it's good. To be honest, I don't necessarily trust <laughs> Blizzard as a company a whole ton anymore, but I hope that it is a good game because Diablo has been a bread and butter of my gaming career, if so to speak, for a very, very long time, even though I've never made content on it, but it's something that I'm at least interested in. And that's the big thing between Diablo as well as Withering Waves in uh, the whole Honkai impact is that it's new, it's refreshing, and honestly, it's gonna get that sort of grimy gutter feeling of, I've kind of figured out all the conversation we could have in Genshin. I've, we've kind of had all those conversations already. We don't really need to have any more, so to speak, out of my system because it's new and it's exciting and we're gonna enjoy it, hopefully. Now, is that to say I'm just done with Genshin Impact right now? Absolutely not. I have a lot of content planned coming up. I wanna do a lot of stuff with characters that I haven't really had access to make content for before. We have Kuki Shinobu. I wanna make a guide showcase for that. I wanna do Nahida. I wanna do Shatter Balloon Candice. I wanna do a lot of different stuff for guides for characters for 2023 in case that content needs to be seen. And with all these different characters in Genshin, there's a lot of stuff to cover for new players. And I'm still gonna be doing that. I'm still gonna be generating content for the foreseeable future for Genshin Impact. And I think a lot of it is gonna be different character builds that I use that I think are interesting, that will be good for new players, or maybe some just some fun stuff. And like I said, check out the Ningguang and Shenhe videos for that kind of content that's gonna be coming down the road. And I don't know if this is going to be a big letdown for you or a big hype up that you're also a little burnt out as well with Genshin. We'll find and cross that bridge when we get to it, but I didn't wanna just randomly throw it out there for you guys. I wanted to give you a heads up on exactly how I've been feeling. And well, this is kind of a big reason as to why I've been kind of trying to branch out within Genshin itself right now because honestly, it's scary to try to do that in the first place as a content creator on this platform because the algorithm will just strike you down if you try too many things at the same time. But I think we're gonna give it a go. I think it'll be fun. And hopefully we can find something that's super intriguing and catches our attention together as a community. If you guys wanna join that community, re-up, check out the link down below for the Discord as well. Hopefully soon we'll start streaming again on Twitch. One of the reasons I haven't is because I could stream a bunch of Genshin cutscenes on Twitch to catch back up or just do the Abyss a couple of times. And then I just, I couldn't find the drive for it, to be honest. And that's sort of where I'm at right now. I just didn't have the drive to do anything, at least not naturally. Could I force it? A hundred percent. I could force it, but it wasn't natural. It didn't feel natural to just go and do it. So hopefully you guys are having a good day out there. Make sure you give someone a call today and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care guys.